Hi guys and welcome back to another quick Photoshop tutorial. My name is Manny and in today's post I would like to show you guys a simple and easy technique. Let me just turn it on here on my PSD layer. I want to show you guys how to add a blue background or any color you would like a kind of new background to your image. I showed a few tutorials before how to work with masks, refine mask, and how to add texture to your background but I've got a few questions or a few people that actually ask me how to add this normal spotlight and blue effect almost like you would be standing in front of a colored backdrop. Okay so let's get started in today's tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to add this blue background and also a small tip on refining your mask again. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, what I did here, very simple. This was my original shot out of the camera. I took that into Camera Raw and then also adjusted the brightness a little bit. Just gave that highlights a little bit of a pop. Added a little, desaturated the saturation a little bit. And also took up my blacks just a little bit to still keep the blacks in my image. Okay, so here's the before and after. Then I obviously added a complete new background, which is over here with a new fill layer, a solid color fill layer. I've added a few um, spots here, a highlighted or spotlight, and also a little bit of a vignette again. I'll show you guys in a moment how to do this. Okay, so I've added that, and then at the end, again, I refined or I copied my original camera raw layer here, and then created a mask with that and refined my mask. So over here is my person again and then we refine that. So this is halfway through the PSD file. It still lacks a lot of work but I just wanted to show you guys quickly how to add the background now. So don't think this is the final product. Okay so let's go back here and first of all just create this background over here that I've already created. Okay, so let's get started. Maybe just on top of this layer. First of all, what I'm going to do to create a new background is go back to layer here and we're going to go back to new fill layer and solid color. Why solid color? Because after that we can always tweak and change our solid color or the color overall. So at the moment it's set to black. I wanted to have it say to a light blue over here. I'm going to pick a, that's a bit of greenish already, so I'm going to take it up a little bit more so we have a little bit blue here. Okay, select it over here, say OK, and I do have my first layer over here, my solid color, just as a normal blue. Now what I want to do is add a kind of a spotlight to my image with a levels adjustment layer. How to do that? Very simple. I'm going to go back to my color layer over here, select my marking tool, and I'm going to select the elliptical marking tool. Okay, then going to create a elliptical marking tool right through my image over here, selection, and I want to drop the selection, and now we have a round selection over here. Next step that I want to do is just basically feather that selection a little bit. So I'm going to go to select, modify, and down here, feather. Feather that by 250 pixels, so it's very, very soft. Say OK that, and we're going to, now it's already feathered, but we're going to feather it again. So again to select, again to modify, and again to feather. Feather that again by another 250 pixels, so over or 500 pixels feathered. Okay, we feathered that and we still have our selection, but we don't have a spotlight yet. Let's go up here to our adjustments. And in adjustments, we will need to create a levels adjustment layer to create a spot. So hit the levels adjustment layer over here. You will now see that we have a kind of a vignetting effect. In the center, we have our nice feathered selection. So over here, let's go up to our levels adjustments here. And I'm just going to take the highlight spot and move this a little bit into the center. And as you guys can already see uh, how bright my center gets and how nicely feathered that selection was. Okay, move that a little bit better and that you can always tweak afterwards again. That's what the nice thing is about working with adjustment levels. Okay, then what we're going to do is make a duplicate of this. So we're going to copy it with Command J. So it gets brighter now, but we actually want to invert that and just create a vignette or darken the sides again. So very simple, on this mask, press Command E and we're going to invert that. So obviously as you guys can see now the outside is bright as well. We didn't want to have that so we're going to go back to our adjustment levels over here. We're going to take the highlight slider again to the right so it's back to normal and now we're going to take the black slider and move that into the center a little bit. So over here you can directly see it gets darker on the sides again but also more contrast here again. So let's try it if we move our slider back and just take the midpoint slider and move that also. It also does exactly the same effect. It also gets more contrast here. OK, 
Okay, move that in a little bit more. And I'm not sure if you guys can see this now, but over here I'm getting these weird rings. That always depends on your selection. So let's go back into filter and with filter I'm going to add a little bit of noise to this. So I'm going to say add noise and around 4 pixels, 4%, 4 that should be fine. So I'm going to hit OK and first of all we have 4% noise on this now but I'm also going to add the 4% noise onto my first adjustment layer here. Go back to filter, back to noise, add noise and again 4%, OK. Hit OK here and directly you'll see that these rings disappear because now we have a little bit of noise and that just breaks the pixels a little bit better. OK, so last step again, I want to create another spot but just a little bit more centered and smaller here in the center that will be right behind his head. So, OK, let's turn off our, our masks here again and we're going to do exactly the same process once over again. Take your elliptical marking tool create a smaller round selection here, move that a little bit into the center. Okay, go back to select, modify, feather that, 200 pixel pixels, okay. And again, select, modify, again, feather with 250 pixels. Okay, then again, we're gonna go back to adjustments and again, a new levels adjustment layer. Over here, we can tweak that again. And as you will see now, this gets completely bright here in the center. I'm gonna take this back again and all the way in and back and all the way in so you'll see that this gets really really bright okay so over here we have now everything that we created from scratch first of all our new color fill layer over here if I'm still not happy with this color I can actually double click on my solid color here and that's the nice thing it takes me right into the color picker again and I can now exchange the color and say I want to have a red color I want to have a green color and more intense more darker or whatever you wish to have I'm going to say cancel over here, so I'm back to my normal settings. And next step I'm quickly going to do is hold shift, just select my other layers here, press command G, and put that into a new group, and just call this our new background. Okay, hit enter, and we have our new complete background over here. So as you guys can see, I'm a little bit lighter than before, and this has a little bit more baby blue than the other one. Okay, so we're going to keep that and also keep our normal background layer and now quickly to our masks. Then let me just switch on our new background and let's go over to our mask and over here you can see how the mask fades in really nicely with the new background. Now with the mask, very simple again, I showed this in a few tutorials before, I duplicated my camera raw layer here, take that all the way to the top, let me just turn off masks. And over here, what I did is took my quick selection tool. I did a whole selection around the person. Let me just do a quick rough selection over here. Okay, so now I've created a rough selection around the complete person. What I did then is went over again to my masks over here, hit the mask, and we directly get a masked out person. But as you guys can see, the edge is still very rough and not good at all. So what I did again, hit right click over here, and I showed this in a few tutorials before. I went over and said refine mask, and with refine mask, I just refined my complete edge of this complete image here and I also took out the fur here a little bit because I wasn't too happy with this okay so let's move this over on the side I again work just on a normal layer on the layer directly here and then what I also did is activated my smart radius I added that to 1.57 pixels smooth or the adjustment edge here that I made it to 30 percent then feathered that by 2.0 pixels contrast I added up to 5 I actually think 10 my shift edge also to 9 plus nine percent and then again obviously just went around the complete person here and just try to get rid of that very dirty edge so that refined the edge a little bit and it helped me to just cut out the person a little bit better it just speeded up my process a little bit okay hit okay that's all I did for this and then obviously as you guys know I'm a bit of an old school guy I really love to go back in with my brush and just refine my edge manually and just clean it up perfectly okay so let me just show you guys quickly what I did here I'm gonna turn off my layers here again or delete them actually go back to the mask and here in mask turn that on okay so that was where my stage was with after refining the edge as you guys can see it cutting out really nicely but I still have this really ugly edge here with having this black 
border. I don't know if you guys can see it now. Here you will see it a little bit. Over here we have this black edge from refining the mask. You can also get rid of that if you go and refine mask and tweak your contrast and the soft edge a little bit. But to be honest with you, I'm not really a fan of that. I really love to have this black edge here and then go back with my mask or my brush and brush that out a little bit. So over here is my second, I'm just going to turn off my layer here. This is my brushed mask after I went in with my brush again and just cleaned all of that up again. So over here that was just with the normal refine edge and this was without the refine edge. So over here that we'll see now when the black line disappears again. So for me that is just another extra that I do on my images. I'll go around my complete person and also just clean up that small black edge that the refine mask leaves. Okay, so that was my quick tip today, how to create a new background and also how to refine your mask a little bit better. If you still don't know how to refine the mask completely, please go back to this tutorial. And thank you guys for watching. My name is Manny. Hope to see you all in my next quick tutorial. See you soon. Bye-bye.